Greetings, I'm Jonathan Spirit. Sometimes running things overnight is a good idea and sometimes it isn't, and welcome to New Omnifactory Super Shorts. Today, running things overnight is how I got the Shulker Data model to self-aware mode and got three and a half stacks of pristine Shulker matter. And I never have to grind for extraterrestrial matter ever again. In the meanwhile, I made my four numismatic dynamos, and I have the 32 diamond plates, which you make in compressors, and the four emeralds that I'm going to need for the lapidary calibration upgrades. Four lapidary calibration upgrades as such. When you're trying to find something in an inventory, you can double-click your search bar to search for it using JEI. You can make conduits with assemblers to improve the yield. I would like to make about 32 vibrant conduits in order to replace all of these conductive iron conduits because you cannot connect conduits of one type to conduits of another type. Due to the upgrading feature of conduits, you only need one conduit of a type to create many conduits of the next type. In order to actually get the diamonds from the Shulker Pristine Matter, I need a loot fabricator. Don't mind me, just making two electronic processors. And now for the difficult part, the part where I attempt to bootstrap this system to provide me just enough power to start creating pulsating polymer clay automatically. What do you mean by this, you ask? I mean that ender pearls have the peculiar ability to create pulsating dust if you extract them into molten ender, chemical react it with quartz, produce resonant clathrate, and smelt it. Sounds like a piece of cake, right? Ha ha ha! We'll put our pristine shulker matter in here, and then give it one diamond to jumpstart the system. Infinite cosmic power! You can right-click on a block that has an old energy conduit to replace it automatically. This doesn't work for most other conduits, but for energy conduits it does, like a charm. Oh no, it's the evil trick of putting another LVCF on a 4 times wire and hooking it up to power. Ah! But why, Jonathan, why, you ask? Would you do something so horrible? And I'm actually going to perform the crazy idea of putting nine machines on this line as opposed to eight. Why? Elementary, my dear Watson. Both these mace raiders only take 10 EU per tick, so two mace raiders together are only using 20 EU per tick as opposed to the 32 EU per tick that is required for one amp of low voltage. So if seven of the machines on this line were running at 32 EU per tick, which is rare, by the way, these two would occupy the space of only one machine, probably the dust machine as well. Remember to batch craft. Instead of making exactly enough electronic circuits for any job, I usually make about 30 at a time because they're so inexpensive. While I set up my machine processing to get more pulsating polymer clay, I'm going to try and run this Enderman data model, but it requires 2048 RF per tick, so I'm going to start feeding diamonds into my numismatic dynamo in order to power it well. But what is this monstrosity? An LVCEF all on its own with three conductive iron cables hooked up to it? As if they were hugging some secret invisible machine that might take four amps of LV power and would need two connections to power it? Because any machine can only take two amps from any face, but an MV machine could take two amps of LV from two faces and therefore have four amps of LV and therefore an entire amp of MV? But why would you need an MV machine, you ask, when using this 100 EU per tick amount for resonant cloth rate? For my pulsating polymer clay trick, I'm going to need an alloy smelter, a fluid extractor, an electrolyzer, two electric furnaces, and one advanced chemical reactor. MV machines require MV machine holes, which require about 9 aluminium plates. Luckily, I have over 128 aluminium. Eventually, I'll be able to make them with one less aluminium plate and polyethylene. Important note, to make magnetic steel rods, you need a basic polarizer, which will turn any item that can be magnetized into the magnetized version of the item. To get a magnetic steel rod, simply throw a steel rod into a polarizer. Behold, the advanced chemical reactor. I'm going to use pressurized fluid conduits to create ender fluid conduits, which are drastically better than pressurized fluid conduits because they can carry any fluid and teleport them as opposed to carrying them inside their inventories or something absurd like that. Important note, when you first place down an ender fluid conduit and connects to a machine, it automatically connects in insert and extract mode. So if anywhere in your network there is a machine with an ender fluid conduit extracting fluids on the green line, and you place an ender fluid conduit, then if the machine you've placed it connected to can accept fluid, it will immediately accept that fluid from anything that's extracting. To mitigate this, never use the green line for ender fluid conduits, because that's the line that's automatically placed down when you put down a conduit. Always use brown instead, or something different. I'm going to use brown. 
With the power of several item filters, I now have glass turning into quartz and going into this advanced chemical reactors, ender pearls going into this fluid extractor, ender fluid going into this advanced chemical reactor, and finally resin and clathrates going into this electric furnace and making pulsating dust. What I need to do now is combine my lovely clay and my pulsating dust into pulsating polymer clay in this basic alloy smelter. So what if we were just to put an item filter on this alloy smelter and tell it to input clay and pulsating dust? I can tell you what I think would happen. The alloy smelter might, at some point, accidentally take 65 clay into itself, and then fill itself entirely with clay, as opposed to pulsating dust. There are two ways to fix this. One is with a limited item filter, uh, which allows you to specify how much of an item Ender I.O. should be inputting into a machine. Compare it is easy. Paper and redstone easy. Z-Logic controller requiring silicon wafers not quite so easy. A little bit more difficult, especially with the solarium. So, instead we're going to make Greg Tech robot arms, which are much cheaper. They are also capable of performing functionality similar to a limited item filter. How do we put them on? Well, they're machine covers. So in order to place them on a machine, we can simply put them on the faces. Other machine covers include conveyor modules, pumps, machine controllers, and machine shutters. To adjust these robot arms, we can right-click on the face with a screwdriver. It has three modes. It will take any items that match its filter, as many as it can, supply exact, it will input exactly a certain amount of items at any given moment, and keep exact, it will only allow a certain number of items into its inventory. This is what we're going to use. And by into itself, I mean that it could also export out of itself into another inventory and check in a similar way if it has the items it's looking for. To filter it, we'll need an item filter which requires steel and zinc foils. To get zinc, we can smelt zinc ore, or I believe sphalerite ore. Sphalerite ore is the only one of those two that we can buy using Omnicoins. Unlike Ender I.O. filters, you cannot open up item filters in your inventory. You need to put them into a robotic arm as such. The Keep Exact button no longer has a specific number on it. You must specify that number in the GUI by just clicking the number of items you want into it. You need to click in a stack of the exact size that you desire. So I'll put in one clay onto this one, and then in here I will put one pulsating dust. Now where are they going to import from? I am going to use a special type of Greg Tech chest called the Small Wooden Chest, which only has one slot in it. I can use a saw on a chest to create it. Why, you ask, am I not just feeding clay and pulsating dust into a single chest and using one robot arm with the filter that has both items in it to just pull from that chest? Because the chest could fill up entirely with clay, or entirely with pulsating dust, I have no idea. Important note, Ender I.O. will not allow you to drag items from the favorite section of JEI into the item filter. You need to pull it from this side instead. Behold, even though there's 12 pulsating dust in the chest, when I pull out a piece of pulsating dust, it only puts one in. Pulsating polymer clay is now automated. All that remains is to make sure that Enderman data models are constantly producing pristine Enderman matter, and that that pristine Enderman matter is constantly creating Ender pearls. But on account of the largesse of the last video, I'm just going to cut this one off here for now. This video is already over 8 minutes long. So for now, that's it for today's episode. In the next episode, we'll try and automate DML on a larger scale. And learn some new tricks along the way. As always, if you have any feedback, I'd love to hear it. I hope you enjoyed, and God bless you all.